are Heather and Paul Christie. And for over 12 years, we've worked with executives and entrepreneurs to accelerate change in every aspect of their business. Because we are in the fastest paced business environment that anyone has ever seen before. So join us for the Evolve to Win show. Today we're talking about handshakes. Shake your money maker! I can't believe you. <laughs> I even wrote that, but anyway, um, you think about, this is a topic that I don't think is talked about that often, and I think for some people, it's just a very a very natural or a trained uh, you know, way of shaking hands that has a very powerful impression. Absolutely. Uh, and there are others who maybe have never actually been trained in how to do the handshake properly. And you know how I know that? Yeah, and you know how you know that, but why don't you tell the listeners how you know that? Well, I mean, all of us have, have shook hands with people, right? And yes. We shook hands with people and we're like, oh my gosh, that was a pretty bad handshake. Yeah. And you were just not impressed. And it kind of sets the tone for the meeting, kind of knowing just a prejudgment of who the person is and how they feel and how they act. And it's just, there's just a lot of things that are communicated in a handshake. I think your handshake can make or break your first impression. Uh, with someone. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I know. I know that it does. And so we're going to talk about this. And and I, for those of you listening, and you've never really thought about your handshake before, and you've always just sort of done what you do, I'd really like you to, to consider just assessing your handshake the next few times that you shake hands and see how it goes for you and really pay attention to what the reaction is from the person who's shaking your hand. You know, do you hear from people when you shake their hand? Have you ever heard someone say, oh my gosh, you have an incredible handshake, or that was a great handshake? If you're not hearing that, you know, there, there may be an opportunity to improve. Well, and are you aware of handshakes in general? So when somebody sticks their hand out and you shake it, are you thinking of, are you feeling that? Are you taking that information in? Or are you just like, oh, okay, move on and let's have that conversation? Because a lot of people really aren't present during the handshake. Let's yeah. just say that. Now, you know, if, if you're one of those people who has trouble remembering names, I'm guessing that this uh, lack of awareness might apply to your handshake as well. And here's why. Usually when we meet someone for the first time, we have so much noise going in in our head, going on in our heads. Yeah, about that, ourselves. About ourselves, yeah. right? Like, what am I going to say? What is this person going to think? Um, who is this person? What are they going to think of me? Like, whatever, right? There's just a lot of noise, chatter that goes on. Yeah. So if you're one of those people who says, oh, my God, I'm terrible at remembering names, um, it's typically just because you're not present in the moment when you're doing that very, very first initial introduction. So we're going to talk about a couple of different um, observations that we've made over the years. We've taught on this over the years as well, and uh, and maybe some some mistakes and also some best practices for the handshakes. And, and you know, this may be used as a podcast for. So we are going to be um, more uh, um, d describing what the handshake were because those of you that are on Facebook Live will see this, but if you're not and you're just listening to it, we'll explain it to you. Yeah. So we're going to do our best. <laughs> For those of you just listening uh -huh. on audio, and because you're driving somewhere and you're listening by podcast, we'll do our best to describe. But this tends to be a podcast that maybe you're going to want to view if this is an area of development for you. So you can find that viewing either on our Facebook page at heatherchristie.com, or you can find it on the Woodich Network, which you can just do a Google search for the Woodich Network. All of our podcasts are up and live on video there as yep. well. Okay. And at Gulf Shore Business. At Gulf Shore Business. They also have it on their yep. website. You can go to gulfshorebusiness.com. Um, okay, so let's start off with uh, just, some, just some generalities around the handshake. So first and foremost, you know that we have a very, very limited window of opportunity to make a first impression. And so the handshake, although we'll be talking about the physical shake as, as really the primary um, focus of this podcast, we are going to include some of the other body language that goes along with the handshake because it's equally as important. So, um, you know, for example, when you first meet somebody, what is your face doing, right? I like to say, if you're happy and enjoying yourself, inform your face and throw a smile on there because we know that someone who has a smile is much more pleasing to meet than someone who has a scowl, right? And if you're not, if you're not conscious, or if you're stressed up, you're just not present in the moment, 
You don't even really know what your face is doing. So that's an opportunity to just like, I'm going to say first things first, take a breath right before you meet somebody, get present, just get yourself in the moment, clear all that clutter and just focus the intention on meeting this person and having some level of excitement or engagement, <laughs> right? Like try to muster that up when you first meet someone. And I know for some of you, that is just not comfortable. It's not fun. It's not easy. Like you're at a networking event and you really, really don't want to be there. Um, well, guess what? We can tell if you really don't want to be there because even if you say the right words, your body language will show us otherwise. So again, I think setting the intention is the first most critical thing that we can do when it comes time for that initial greeting and that handshake. Yeah, and you can always tell when somebody is being forced to go to a networking event because you can tell that they don't want to be there and that their company paid for them to go and they need to go and they have this look on their face like i don't want to be here and they're kind of they look a little scared too yeah they can't tentative yeah. anxious stressed I mean, right. there's all kinds of emotions that we read when we're doing the initial meeting with someone right. right yeah and and the thing is you don't have to be an expert in body language to tell when somebody's just not having it at any event that you attend yeah, so let's get into the handshake. So, so let's talk about the handshake itself. Right. Um, some of the best practices. Give me one of the best practices that you have for handshakes. Well, I always, I'm very, very conscious of when I shake somebody's hand, how it feels. Yeah. Um, and there's there's a lot, of, and there's been studies on this, believe it or not. There's been studies on it, and there are like eight different categories of the type of handshake, not the categories, but the, the, the senses, yeah, the yeah. strategy. And there's, you know, from having like, cold clammy hands to how firm you shake to you know are your hands too dry or you know do you give the limp wrist you know that whole thing. and so when i shake somebody's hand the first thing when i shake somebody's hand if it's a good handshake that immediately sets the tone for me that i'm meeting somebody that has some confidence that generally when they have a good handshake meaning it's not too hard, it's not too soft, it's, it, it feels right, mm -hmm. that, that person usually comes off to me as a, as a very, like, just grounded, nice, just kind of got their act together type of person. That's my impression that I get immediately. All right, so for you, it really is the feel, the firmness of the grip. And let's just talk about what that right grip is, because I think that um, for those who haven't actually studied this or maybe been taught the right kind of handshake, the grip is very simple. You know, the, the handshake, what do they say, 2,500 years, this handshake thing has been around since yes, the ancient, right. ancient Greek times. And it's about our hands actually fitting together, almost like puzzle pieces, right? <laughs> it's pretty How funny it that we're be. talking about this. It is kind of that funny. That, that handshakes, because they've been around for so long. Like, and it's it such a be basic made. way, right, Yeah. Of, of greeting somebody. But the reason we decided to do this is because we know there are many, many people out there that have horrible handshakes and they don't know it. And it's not serving you. And that's no, really, that's, that's really why we want to share this, because that is not serving you. So the so the the level of firmness on the grip, it's really important to get that piece right. And I know this sounds just ridiculous, but seriously, try practicing it with somebody who is close to you, right? So when you're doing that handshake, making sure you go web to web with the this thumb, web to this web. This web to this web with the thumb. And gripping around the bottom with all four fingers. I'm wearing blue nail polish so you can actually yeah. <laughs> see this. Grip with all four fingers. Because when you do that, you've made the actual connection. Now, notice that Paul's hand is not turning white because I'm not squeezing it like a death grip, which would be the wrong way to do it. I call that right. the bone crusher. And there's nothing, nothing ever pleasant about shaking hands with someone who feels the need to squeeze so hard. And you know, maybe they do it because they're really showing you how excited they are to meet you, or maybe they're doing it to assert some level of dominance. I think most often they do it because they're unaware of how strong and how hard they're gripping. Yeah. And I've got a very strong hand. I mean, I play tennis all the time. So it's not as though you're gonna hurt me when you shake my hand, but man, you can tell a bone crusher anywhere yeah and quite frankly we know people who are those bone crusher handshakes where 
I don't know, at some level of competition, like, can I actually crack something in there? Can I crack a knuckle when I shake your hand? And so let me ask you, do you have, do you have men that do the bone crusher on you? I've had, absolutely. Yeah. I've had men do the bone crusher on me. Not a lot of women have done it, but it's happened before. And again, either it's anxiety coming up, it's, it's just complete lack of awareness, or maybe you've been taught in some way from someone in your past that that is the right way to do to show assertiveness. I don't know, but it really doesn't work. And I think what happens is it's completely distracting oh, from the totally. initial meeting because totally. all you can think of is like, man, that hurt. I can't, like, ouch. Yeah, and, I, and, and I have, I've had it where I've met guys and I could tell that they – want to assert themselves as the alpha male, right? Mm -hmm. And you just, they got that like bravado about them and they come in with the handshake and they crush my hand. And I got a pretty strong hand. You got a big, and a big hand. hand. Yeah. But I get done and I'm like, what, what, is, what is that all about? That is so, and it immediately, so you talk about how it makes the first impression. That first impression to me is just like a total turnoff. I mean, and I think if, it, if it's conflicting, usually it isn't. Usually that big bone crusher comes with the guy that's trying to show you something, trying mm -hmm. to show me something. And it doesn't happen that often. But when it does, it's very – and it's a total turnoff. And by the way, those who have the bone crusher handshake, everyone knows it, and they will talk about it outside. Yeah. Like, oh, that guy, he's got that handshake that will literally pick you out. Like, People don't necessarily want to shake hands. They'd rather go in for a hug with this guy because they're afraid of getting hurt. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, all right, so that's a bone crusher. We're clear on that one. Now, the other one that honestly... Well, let's go the opposite of the bone crusher. Okay, let's do, let's do the opposite. Yeah. Perfect. Has it ever happened to you where you go to shake someone's hand and they give you're you... You're going in. You're going in like you're going in hard to do the web to web. Let's just see. Let's see. And it, are you going to do the shake or me? You do it. Okay. Because so in a lot of cases, it's, it's more women than No, do it's not. No, it's not. Maybe for you. For me, I, I, I never have met. Let's show them first, okay. and then let's, okay. Right. So, so you guys tell us, have you experienced this? Tell, you write it in if, it, if you have more men or more women that do this handshake. You ready? Okay, so they come in. You're, you're ready to go web to web, and they only give you yep. just, just the littlest bit of their hand, like the fingertips, and they don't allow you to actually... Grip the hand. It's kind You're of like, supposed to go like this. It, yeah, like it almost looks like I need you to kiss my hand. So, so it's so just going like, in, going to love, and then you get the, they stop they, you. They stop you. With, they stop short. They stop short. And then you get the, the and it's kind of the dead fish really, type of hand. Yeah, dead fish, like really light. I almost, like, I almost don't want to touch you, but I definitely like. There's something awkward about doing web to web in my mind, right? So here's what I don't. I, I don't understand the psychology behind this, um, but, I, but I'd really love to know if, if you are someone who does that handshake. You know, Paul says, ooh, women are way more likely to do this. I do not find that. I find a lot of men doing this handshake. So my question is, are you doing that because you've been taught that maybe that's polite because you're shaking the hand of a female and so you're maybe being more dainty? I don't know. Are you doing that? for some other reason, or are you just completely unaware of how to do a, a, a firm handshake? Um, but I do get it all the time, not all the time, but many, many times from men. And mm -hmm. usually, okay, we study behavioral styles, that's where our expertise is. Usually it is the person with the style of being more reserved. More introverted. The person who's more, more introverted, yeah. the person who is much more quiet, uh, much more shy. That is typically the person you get that handshake from. Yeah, and and like I said before, the, hand, the handshakes are the first impression in a lot of cases. And so when you get somebody who gives you either the bone crusher or you get the limp fish handshake, that immediately tells you something about that person. So the reason we're doing this particular topic is because we want you to check your handshake. Do you have a handshake? that's setting the right impression or the wrong impression. Yeah, because if your handshake is setting the right impression, then, you, then you're, you're really starting off that initial meeting with someone going, wow, what, like, wow, that was a great handshake. Yeah. I'm kind of interested in meeting this person. And if you start off with one of the others that we're sharing with you, what's, what you're doing is you're completely distracting from what that initial meeting is going to be about, maybe potentially distracting from who you really are. And so doing that sort of half a handshake, the limp fish that Paul's telling you, 
Um, what I, I what I do, to... I actually, if you give me, give me that limp okay. handshake, okay? So I'm going in, and he only gives me a little bit. I'll actually try to, but you, you're, <laughs> okay. you're not that strong. All it's right. usually right. soft. Right. I usually will try to and go all the way and do the grip just because I want to have that initial. And, it, and, and I won't do that because I'm the guy, guy and I don't want to push it. through, and I'm like, ooh, okay. But I think, you know, for me, I want to let someone know that, you know, I want to, I want to have that proper first yeah. impression. And so I don't know, I don't know if someone then feels I'm way too dominant, um, but the reality is I just, I want to get in there and just have, have the web to web and, and do the handshake. Yeah, right? and just, you know, on a side note, I, every time I get a good handshake from a woman, uh, in most cases I will, I will compliment her on her handshake yeah, because I'm, I'm impre really impressed when I meet, it just, it just tells me immediately that that person's confident, whether it's a man or a woman. I think confidence is the first thing I take away from it. Somebody with a good, firm, solid handshake, not the bone crusher, not the limp wrist, not some of the other ones we're going to talk about in just a couple minutes, um, that sets the impression of just confidence, certainty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? I, I compliment men and women all the time if I get a good handshake, but it's, I would say that it's, um, it's not rare by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, the, the great handshake is not just the grip, it's the everything, it's the eye contact, it's the smile, it's knowing that there's an intention behind that person to meet you. And you can feel all of that, you can sense it all, and when the whole package is there, that's when I'm like, wow, yeah. you know, this person's yeah. totally, totally here in the moment, which that in itself is unique, right, to just be present. Got it. And so let's move on to the next. Okay, I want to do my next one, which is one of, one of my all-time favorites. I call this one the pulse checker. And, okay, I had never even been aware of this. I, I just hadn't come across it in Chicago that I, that I knew of when we lived up there. But when I came down here, I started noticing it more and more. So I don't know if this is a regional thing or if I was just unaware back then, which is entirely possible. And it, and it is possible. I mean, we are a much older demographic down here. You may want to check the pulse more often. Oh, you're funny. I'm like, that has nothing to do with it. But that's really, that's really good, Paul. <laughs> So I'm going to have to show okay. you. I'll be the I was going to say, checker. we have to do left no, hand. I'll do it because I, know. Oh, I can do it. it. Yeah. Sorry. I can All right, do so it. here's how you do it. Here's how the pulse checker goes. It's two straight fingers when you go in for the handshake. So Paul's going to demonstrate so you can see the two straight fingers. Okay, do you see what's happening Bam. here? Bam. Bam. It's almost right like there. you're, you're yeah. making like a gun. Yeah, that's like a and you 72 totally... beats per minute. <laughs> <laughs> and so... I don't so it's, like yeah. I don't have my I don't have much to say about this one other than awkward. Like it's just awkward. Why are you doing that? I don't I, I just don't understand. Like let's do it again. Okay. Bam. That's yeah. That's, right there. Oh, I don't know. But um again it just feels kind of weird. So what's what I'm left with when I have that at the initial handshake is just one of these I don't really get that. So if there's anybody out there who actually does the pulse checker, you know you do the pulse checker and you've got a reason behind it. Please tell me what that is. Why were you taught to do that? I believe, again, it's one of those instances where people are just unaware. They've, they've oh. gotten into this habit of shaking a hand that way for whatever reason, and it just is, it's just uncomfortable, and it, can, it kind of feels weird. Yeah. So, again, distracting from that initial meeting. So, uh, then, without... And, and, and so, just in one... So, talking about, like, the good handshake, the, the right way to... I mean, so you can't... You can't feel the way that we feel on this, so, but you know what the right amount of pressure is. The wetness, the dry, like the how dry your hands are, like the they damp, they damp. Yeah. About that. So, so before that, so I just want to show you. It is this this palm? What is it? The palm here? It's the side it's of like the, the palm. The side of the palm of the edge. That's where all, all the, way down. the fingers should go. Not here. Not here. Not the rest. There. All on, on the underneath on the bottom of the palm, all four fingers. Yeah. Web to web, four fingers on the palm. That's and firm. It. And firm. Not strong, but firm. Right? That's right. it. Easy. It's actually, it really is a very simple. So let's talk about how much time you spend okay. on a handshake. Because that one's funny, too. You sometimes get someone who shakes your hand, and they're like this, and they're kind of aggressive, oh, and yeah. they're, they're shaking, shaking, shaking. Oh, yeah. And this you're is, talking, this is and you're like, shaking baby give it syndrome back. there, right? <laughs> give it back, give it back. So, like, just, you know, a couple, one, two, yeah. one, two, three, like that. Yeah. I would not go longer than a three-second count. More like two is probably yeah. fine. It's like a tap-out, almost, three seconds. Like, 
at the most. Oh, is that One, what the tap two, on is? Two, three, yeah. Yeah. Like so, that's it. yeah. So just a, just a, a short period of time. Now you also will find those people. Have you ever had this one happen? where you go in to shake the hand, and let's just say that it's someone you haven't met before, because this is where I think this is a big mistake. Someone you haven't met before, they go in to shake your hand, and when, so you're coming in to shake my hand, and I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm a hugger. Oh, no. I'm a hugger. Oh, no. And so I stop the <laughs> handshake, and I literally just jump right in because I'm a hugger. Now, that unfortunately, like if you happen to randomly be meeting someone else who's a hugger, that can work, okay? That can yeah, work. Yeah. But if you've never met this person and you don't know, what you need to know is there are people who absolutely hate when you proudly really like space. I don't he like doesn't them. like it. Like if we ever go to a, a church service that has the opening session where you're greeting people and the people who you're greeting who you've never met before are just all full of oh, hugs, that he literally, he, he won't go back. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> but, but, put a drink in me, you know. Wow. Yeah. If you're in a bar, it's a different story. Paul's a hugger. Right? Like everybody. Um, everybody. So, but, but this is really important to get. If you're a hugger, and, and, I, and I know, and there are people out there who are like, not only am I a hugger, but I've pulled this off with the most non-huggers ever. Well, pulled it off versus them enjoying it, those are two totally different things, right? I get yep. that you can pull off a hug because if you force someone into it, they might hug you. But the reality is, have you ever done this where you've hugged someone and they've had like the straight arm clinch, like you can feel every muscle tensing, that's because they're not huggers. Yep. So never make the mistake that someone wants you to go in for a hug. And in fact, unless I know someone very well, I always offer the handshake first. If they instead start to go for the hug, I'll change and go for the hug. And I'm doing that out of respect for the other person, right? Because not everyone's a hugger and there are people who actually despise being touched like that. Um, and quite frankly, with everything that's going on in our world politically, I'm just going to say, there are people who are probably getting offended if you're hugging them. So let's just throw that out there yeah. and move on because we need to move on to that one. And so, let, so let's also talk about, um, so the handshake in itself is just that web to web, the fingers underneath the palm, nice firm, make sure your hands are dry. So if you have, if your hands get like, you know, it's summer in Florida right now, so it's hot. And your hands very easy. And so, but, but if you're somebody who has kind of damp hands a lot, you need to wipe your hands off because even though you may have a great firmness, you may have a left to web, you may do the exact thing. So that feeling of getting somebody's sweat on your own hand, it can gross you out. Or it, even yeah. if you've just washed your hands True. and they didn't dry totally. completely or whatever. I mean, I've literally at times, if my hands are wet for some reason and I'm not in the kind of outfit where I can just kind of dry them off, I'll be like, how about we do a fist bump because my hands are wet. I just, you know. Like, yeah, like, and I tell people, I, I tell people, I just I just washed my hands. Yeah. So oh, if they're a little damp. Yeah, yeah, so if they're going to be damp, I just washed my hands. So that's why they mean. Cool. Yeah. I let them know that because, because otherwise, if you don't. Have yeah. you done that where you shook someone's hand and it was so sweaty that you actually had to wipe your own hand off? And then that's so awkward. So now that completely distracts. I mean, you talk about taking taking you off the rails yeah. of meeting somebody, right? Yeah, you're distracted. you're like, whoa, I just have a ton of sweat from yeah. some person's hand on my hand. Yeah, and like now I gotta, go and now I gotta figure out where to wipe this thing off. Yeah. And you can't do it on their back. So look and there are some people who maybe have a condition where their palms sweat. In that case, do you do you just have a handkerchief with you? There's some go grab a cocktail napkin, something where you can just quickly, you know, it's it's cool. Like I don't think anybody's gonna get uptight about that. Um, but it is definitely a distraction if you've just if you've just had a handshake with someone and you're left with whatever residue on your hand, whatever it is, like you know, that's just awkward. Well, and also, so I think having a dry hand isn't that bad com compared to the real damp wet hand, uh -huh. right? Yeah. So that one I'm not too concerned about because that one I'm sort of like, oh, somebody's you know whatever. Um, but another one is temperature. So, you know, when the air conditioning's on and it's freezing in a room and your hand's like just like an icicle and you give somebody a handshake and they shake your hand and they say your hands are freezing, yeah. that also distracts from the initial meeting, from the initial impression that's being made. And it says something, just says something about you. It tells you some somebody that 
you know, why are your hands going? Is something wrong with you? Is, you know, do you, you know, whatever it is. Do you not have good blood flow? Yeah. You know? Well, and that it just one, has to just, you have that one literally you can do like this. Yeah. And, and listen, I don't know about you guys, but in Florida, for whatever reason, when it's 90 degrees outside in the summer, they feel it has to be 60 inside. And so it does, it gets freezing cold. And I am one of those people where my nose is cold, my fingertips are cold. Yeah. So I'm literally doing this to warm up before shaking someone's hand, which yeah. can also look funny. And, and, and so let's, the handshake itself is the most important thing, but there's really, that's part A, and then there's 2A, and that is eye contact. There's A and 2A. Okay. Not A and B. Well, <laughs> the, I, well I say that because it's, it's almost as important as, so that's 1A is the handshake. Yeah. 2A is eye contact. Yeah. So when you get a good yeah. handshake, right? So we do the handshake. But we look into each other's eyes. So you're not looking away. You're not looking at their feet. You're not a lot looking. Of people about, are looking down. Yeah, or, or you're looking at the, the handshake. You look in their eye. Mm -hmm. and you give the couple of shakes, and you break. And then you break. Yep. And that's it. That's and it. of course, you're usually introducing yourself when you do this. And one of the things I do when I do my introduction, I give my full name mm -hmm. because unless I know them like they're a very good friend of mine and of course they remember my name, I actually still give my name if it's someone who I've met before and maybe I already know their name. I never expect that someone remembers my name. So I just yeah. think that's really courteous, especially if you are a person who gets out and does a lot of networking and you know you meet a lot of people. It's I think that's just courteous. So give well, and, and I and and I am guilty of this and I've had this happen to me. And it's a little embarrassing is when I shake somebody's hand, they'll give me their name mm -hmm. and I forget to give them my name. Oh yeah. That's and then works. and then we separate and, and they go like, what's, what's your name? name? And yeah. I'm like, can I even tell my name? Yeah. I mean, really? I yeah. just met them. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. But so I have to be really conscious of that. And even if, okay, so even if you've met someone, like let's say we're at an event and we meet early in the event and you run by them again later in the event, I still give my full name again because they've probably just met another 20 people and I would never expect that they remember my name. And I know for most people, it's so awkward to say, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, Lee, please tell me again. Yep. Um, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with doing that. There's nothing wrong with just asking. But if you ask a second time, lock it in then, right? My friend, Ron White, who's the memory expert, he's mm -hmm. the US memory champion. Um, he taught me that when you're meeting someone in your head, you should be saying as you walk up to them, what's your name, what's your name, what's your name, what's your name? Because as you're, you're like programming your subconscious to remember it. And I'm telling you what, since the time he's taught me that strategy, I have been exponentially better at remembering names. And it's about like really wanting to know at that very first moment when you're meeting. But you've got a lot of other things going on in that moment right. too because you're doing the handshake, you're doing the eye contact, hopefully you're doing the smile and you're introducing yourself. Cool. So, um, so I wanted to ask you, in your opinion, and I will let you finish your coffee. Um, so, if we shake hands, when we shake hands, is what's your feeling about somebody touching the other hand on top of it or touching your shoulder? What is your opinion about that? Because um, I see a lot of people do that. Yeah, I think that it's it's probably not the best way to do the first impression, and I know that it's showing like. A, like a, maybe a genuine care for someone or a, or a real friendliness yeah. um, in business situations. Now, like if you're a church or something and you want to really be warm and you're welcome, I think that, that that's probably okay. But again, remember, there are people who still feel that that invades their personal space. True. For me, I'm fine with it. Yeah. But I always keep in mind like the whole realm of people you could run into. And if you get someone who is uncomfortable when you're in their space, the handshake is about all they can handle. So even that extra little tap on the outside of the hand, probably not good. So I recommend that you not do that unless it's someone who you already know, who you've met before, who you're friendly with. Um, better to just allow it to be professional, especially at that first meeting. Okay. So two other things, and then you can wrap this up. Okay. All right. I can't wait um, to hear what your other two things so are. So two, two tips. One, and this is one that I learned and I use all the time when it happens. Occasionally, when you are just meeting somebody, you'll stick your hand out. They'll stick their hand out to give you the handshake, and you miss 
and it just gets kind of messed up, right? You just don't make, or it ends up, you know you both have good handshakes, but it just never connects properly. You end don't up leave, don't leave it like that. Do not leave it like that. Step away, and don't even step away. Just say, can we do that again? That's all you need to say again. Because they'll, they'll want to start engaging or whatever after it, and I want to make sure that I make that good impression. So if we mess up, I just, we mess up and it just wasn't right. I'd say, can we do that again? And then I shake their hand and just kind of smile at it. But that way I guarantee myself to get a good handshake and to make that right impression. So don't feel uncomfortable about that. Actually, it's a really good thing to do. It's a good icebreaker because usually the person on the receiving end was kind of embarrassed about the handshake. And when you say, let's do that again, it kind of lets them off the hook too. Like, I flubbed this one up. Right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And my next and, and the second tip that I have for you, networking events, anywhere you go, make sure you wash your hands after you're done. <laughs> you go to these networking events and everybody's shaking each other's hands and then you're going to eat food and people are putting food in their mouth with their hands. You're like, oh my gosh. Just be safe. <laughs> wash your, you're not wash your hands. Mouth, but, yeah. I'm not a German Hollywood folk, but I mean, it's just... That one kind of weirds me out a little bit, you yeah. know, because yeah. especially when you're shaking a lot of There's a lot, right? lot of shaking, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, um, so you can wrap it up? Um, yeah, I think, I think we've really kind of covered all different aspects, all different angles. It's probably more than you've ever wanted to know yeah. about <laughs> handshakes. But what's going to happen out of this, uh, you know, watching this or listening to this, is you're going to be way more aware not only of someone else's handshake and how they're doing it, but you're going to become a, a more, aware, more aware of your own. And as we've said, in most of the issues that people have in handshaking that really aren't serving them so well or derailing them, um, most of the time they're not aware of it. I really, really believe that. And, of course, I don't feel it appropriate to coach someone when we have a handshake yeah. and it doesn't work well, unless, of course, it were a client or someone I knew well. Um, but it, it's not the kind of thing that we correct with each other, right? We just don't do that. We don't say, like, hey, can I talk to you about your handshake? And, you know, I did hear, um, I, I can't think of his name right now, but it, he's, a, he's a famous speaker. He's got a book out there. I might come up with it. Andy Andrews, Andy Andrews, um, said that he did this amazing thing with his child. So he was um, very involved in his church group, and his son was young, like five, six years old. And, and what would happen is all of the elders in the church who he was, you know, serving on a committee with or whatever yeah. – um, when they saw his son, they'd go up to him and be like, hey, man, and they'd give him a high five because he's a kid. And he literally sat them down and said, I, I really he sat down the elders. elders. Yeah. He sat down the elders. And he said, I really, really need you to do me a favor. I want to teach my son the proper way to introduce himself. I want him to be able to do that with confidence, with a nice firm handshake, and, a, and look them in the eye and, and, and really start showing the confidence right now at this young age. And every time you see him and you're like, hey man, with a high five or the fist bump, he's not learning and he respects you. So I'm gonna ask you, would you please get on board with me and really help my son to develop this confidence at a young age? They all agreed. And so what they began doing with his son is when his son came up, they would, they would give him a proper handshake, they would look him in the eye and they would say hello to him and they would compliment him every time he gave a firm and proper handshake. And you think about what that did for him. I mean, the studies, if you read the studies on handshakes, everything from getting a position or not getting a position in a new job oh, or career, absolutely. it's 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 everything. I mean, the, st the statistics actually show, hands down, that if you have a poor handshake, you're not as likely to get the job. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of reasons why it matters, but absolutely, um, if your handshake is not serving you, you want to make sure you know about it and make some corrections to it. Great. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. As we said, if you're listening to this podcast, you might be better off actually viewing it on video. So if you want to catch it on video, you can either go to Facebook and type in heatherchristie.com. You can go to Gulf Shore Business because our podcast is produced in partnership with Gulf Shore Business Magazine. Or you can go to the Woodich Network. And they are or our own, YouTube channel. Or our YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, if you type in Heather Christie, and then just ignore the rock star Heather Christie, because yeah. she's probably still going to be coming up first. Um, but if you type in Heather Christie and scroll down, I should be the second one on there. And all of our podcasts that we do, all of our Facebook Lives that we do, are also there on video for you. So connect with us if you haven't already. Please subscribe. And if you know someone 
who could use some help with their handshake in a very subtle way, but honestly, because you love them and you want them to uh, you know, have a more effective first impression, please share this one with them. Have a great week.